What is up guys, Eric here from Real Film Reviews bringing you another movie review, this time for the new Shailene Woodley film, Allegiant. Allegiant is the third film in the Divergent series following Divergent and Insurgent and is the second to last part, sort of part one, because it's the first half of the last book that's titled Allegiant, but they're splitting the movie into two parts but not wanting to name them part one and part two, so the fourth one will be called Ascendant, even though this one doesn't tell you at all that there will be a fourth one. I don't really want to spoil anything from the previous two films, so this movie basically picks up from the ending point of the second one and more turmoil is still going on in the city of Chicago, and they decide that they should leave the walls to try to find out if there's any life outside of Chicago, and of course a bunch of craziness ensues and we end up with this pile of muck that is the movie Allegiant. Now I kid you not when I tell you the cast of this film, this movie stars Shailene Woodley, Jeff Daniels, Octavia Spencer, Naomi Watts, Miles Teller, and Ansel Elgore. That's a pretty good cast, right? You'd think this movie would be pretty good. You'd think even if the script of this movie wasn't that great, these people could carry this movie. You'd be wrong. The man who directed this film previously directed Insurgent, the second installment in the Divergent series, which was pretty bad, and he also directed the modern classic R.I.P.D., because, you know, everybody loved that movie so much. Now that you know the large and fairly impressive cast of this film, you'll be shocked to learn that they're the best part about this entire film. They give the best performances they can in the movie, meanwhile the rest of the movie is garbage. The script is a lot to blame for this, because these actors are doing the best they can with this bad script they've been handed. Some of these actors are Oscar class actors, and they have signed on to this film for some reason, and have been forced to act through it, and they try their best. Miles Teller, I'd say, does the best of everyone in this film, but even then, he's struggling throughout some of these bad moments in this script. The only other thing I can say that's even fairly positive about this film is there are small set pieces in this movie that actually are pretty nice. Most of the time they're ruined by horrendous green screen or CGI, but the set pieces on their own are kind of nice, and that's a small little detail in the movie that I think is fair. But the rest of this movie is pretty much a pile of trash, because you have horrendous green screen throughout this film. There's one scene where Miles Teller stands in front of a train that's going by, and they literally just like, you can see the outline of him in front of the train, and it's terrible. The CGI, the green screen, every moment in this movie that is like that looks so artificial. There are small moments where there's just a small amount that's used, and they look fairly decent, but the big moments that are supposed to be like the, oh my gosh moments, they look so bad. They, I was laughing audibly in the film at multiple times in this movie. I don't know if they ran out of money on this film or what, but the strange thing about this is this movie is so clearly a cash grab, similar to what the Hunger Games did when they split their movies into two parts. Harry Potter's worked successfully, and I never saw Twilight, but this is very similar to Hunger Games. This is worse than Hunger Games, but it's similar because they shouldn't have these kinds of CGI issues if you're trying to split this movie into two. That means you're confident you're going to make a bunch of money on these. And after how bad the second film was, I'm shocked that they would want to make this one into two parts because after seeing this one, yeah, I'm going to go see the last part just to finish off this horrendous series, but it doesn't make any sense fiscally because if you know the second one was rough and a lot of people critiqued it hard, then why would you say let's make two more when we could just make one more? This one focuses on the the first half of the book, and it's rough enough as is. The script is clearly the weakest part of this film. It tears this whole movie down another notch of the notches that had already been knocked down from the terrible CGI and the terrible everything else, but the script has all these extremely talented actors, and to be fair, the more older actors like Jeff Daniels and Octavia Spencer and Naomi Watts signed on to this film. I'm not sure why, but they're very talented people, so they probably had a reason. Maybe they just needed a paycheck or something. But Shailene Woodley and Miles Teller, it's almost sad that they still have to keep doing these movies because they're signed on to contracts. They signed on to these movies before anyone got to see them in The Spectacular Now or Whiplash, so no one knew that they would grow into these great stars 
stars or the stars of tomorrow. Maybe at the moment they aren't great, but they clearly show the potential to be great, and they still have to do these terrible movies. And it's like all of these actors are kind of sleepwalking through this film. They're sort of just going through the steps, and there maybe are moments where their performance is decent. Miles Teller has some pretty good jokes in the movie, but overall, most of these actors are way too talented to be in this film. Theo James fits in perfectly in this movie, let me tell you, because that guy is not very good. He's pretty, and he looks good on screen, but he does not sell anything that has to do with emotion whatsoever. And he is a major weak point in the acting in this film. He's pretty decent in the action sequences if it wasn't for the fact that the director starts the movie off with some action sequences that are actually filmed fairly well, I'd say. But then he, at the end, when the action sequences get more intense, he cuts into a shaky cam, and the movie sort of just turns to crap. At the end of the film, the last half of this movie, the direction changes from being decent to being really bad. Lazy is the best way to describe this movie. Besides the few talented people where maybe it doesn't seem like they're doing amazing, they're trying the best they can with this script. It's not the actor's fault if the script is very bad. They're doing the best they can. So although it seems like they're sleepwalking, it's because this script is so dumb and bad and they're so much more talented than this movie is. And everything about this movie is just lazy. The green screen, the CGI, every aspect of this film feels lazy. There's even one part that I'm going to describe in detail so you understand what I'm talking about. There's an aspect of this film where they have these drones that fly around. Whatever, the drones look fake, it's whatever. But they'll create a sheet if you're being shot at. Somehow they just know to create a shield. I don't know. And there's a part where Shailene Woodley and Zoe Kravitz are walking down a hallway shooting at people with these fake prop guns. And the little shields are up above them and they're allowed to shoot through but the bullets won't go through the other way. It makes no sense. But then their guns aren't shooting anything. There's, no, there's nothing that looks like anything is flying out of the guns. It's just like a light on the front that's flashing every time they pull the trigger. And it's so clearly just a little toy gun with a light on the front of it that's just lighting up when they pull the trigger. There's nothing coming out. You see people falling when the camera cuts to the other angle, but nothing's happening. It's just a light. It is so clearly just a light. There's another scene where there's supposed to be an incinerator and it's a video of fire. It's not even a real fire. They couldn't make a fire? Like what? You can't make a fire? It's probably more expensive to buy that screen to put the fire on than it would have been to just build a damn fire. I'm gonna give Allegiant a D minus. It's honestly really disappointing how downhill this series has gone. I watched Divergent, and I actually enjoyed Divergent a decent amount. Insurgent really let me down, and I thought it was really bad, but I was kind of hoping this one would maybe bring it back a little bit, and it really didn't at all, and I think that this one might be worse than Insurgent, but they're pretty much at the same level of being awful, and it's sort of sad. I wish this movie would have been better, because I think they have a lot of really good young stars, and they also brought in some old veterans that are also very good actors, but I really think the writers and maybe they're having budgetary issues. I don't know, but I don't see how you get to make four films if you're having budgetary issues with your movie and you're making a profit every time. I would think they'd give you enough money to make the movie as good as it needs to be, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. This movie's not good, though. Well, guys, as always, I'm Eric. If you enjoyed this review, please do like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of Allegiant, share everything we do here on Real Film Reviews, and I hope to see you guys later.